All right, guys, have to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to the second day of Major 3 qualifiers. The winning interesting games went down today to Barn Burners to start out the day. And then Optic Texas take down Florida Meteors very comfortably indeed to maintain their undefeated map streak with Pro Loot in the roster. Very much in to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Plenty to dive into today. First of all, this actually from the subliners. They confirmed they've released Neptune from the team as they described. We thank Travis for his heart and passion he showed during his time with the squad. The young god remains a shining star. We can't wait to see where his journey takes him next. But um, yeah, his stock right now in a bit of a difficult spot, especially after what Subliners has pulled off at the Prime Classic and all the drama that went down with Crim6 and Cone Cricket basically came out and said, look, no one wants this guy. Like, well, so he's going to have a difficult time, I imagine, getting back into League. Of course, if expansion happens, it's a different story. As he says in this tweet right here, today I've officially been released by New York. Sorry for not performing as well as I know I could have, but I've really found my passion again for the game recently, so he's looking for another chance. Of course, like, there's players all across the board taking those chances right now. Pro Loot certainly being one of them. Of course, he's not going to be in the starting team for long. We hope if he can return, but that, of course, is doing a stellar job for now, no doubt. And that's the thing. These guys have waited a long time for their chance. You've got to capitalize upon it. And if you had his chance last year, and now he's got a big chance on a big team like New York. Team with guys like Clayster and Crim6, and of course, it doesn't really go to plan. Let's talk about the first series of the day. As Austin points out, this series was the 100th of the Seadell circuit for this season. The 400th map of the season, actually, kind of interesting stuff. But it starts off with the Paris Legion victory. I was getting kind of concerned at this point, just because earlier today I predicted London to win this 1-3-2, and I was thinking, okay, I'm going to second here, Paris are actually doing the job in the respawns again, and in fairness, their respawn has got significantly better, but it does seem like, especially in the session destroys, there are still some liabilities on this squad, like, the thing is with John is that, like, you know, he's a solid player, no doubt, world champion, world championship winning MVP, but, um, yeah, he just doesn't have the consistent series in the kind of, what well, the amount of, the quantity, I suppose, that he needs to if this team wants to be competitive. Donny Temp was doing his thing, we'll look at the stats here in a second, but once again, their session destroy pretty woeful, London looked really good, and this actually and generally like at London have been a pretty good search and destroy team I think so far this year even with subs and all that type of stuff they've seemingly made it work and Harry was the MVP of this series to me he was absolutely monstrous like he had so much damage this series we'll see the damage stats here in a second he was absolutely pumping it out and uh, well doing enough actually to win this Berlin control there was some entertaining Berlin controls there I can't lie like when you get into these kind of pressure situations and um, all you really need is a few kills to actually get onto that B point it's much easier to attack than the Kavutu one which I do think is which does make to be honest a much more pleasurable viewing experience we'll see that here in a second actually in the Optic series as well. That's a 2-1 advantage for London, but they lose this game as well. Donny Temp goes on a massive 10 spree towards the end, ties up the series again, putting London in a position where they'll have to go 2-3-5 if they wanted to win the series, but they did exactly that pretty much emphatically in the final map as well. So I get London dominate both search and destroys and they win the control as I will at London World Wave and say Paris, Nil Point. If you guys have um, you know, been watching Eurovision tonight, if you're from America, you probably have no idea what Eurovision even is, but uh, yeah, first time in my lifetime, probably at least when I've actually been watching it, that the UK were on the left side of the scoreboards. And second place to UK Ukraine. We certainly take that one given the circumstances. Shout out Sam Ryder. What a performance. If you guys watch that one tonight. But yeah, Ravens are kind of getting into the battle. But 2-3-5, they did the Neslo effectively to Paris. Not really the way you want to win this series against Paris. You certainly want to win some respawns here. But just the fact that they can do this in pretty comfortable fashion with their hard point not looking so good right now, still adjusting to the roles and stuff that they're going to be running with here. If they can get back to a 50% hard point, they looked more comfortable in the other modes. Ravens could start to be a threat again. And just this victory right pretty much cements their place at the World Championship even further than it already is. So They've got some time to figure things out. Some people think it was kind of a scary series result for them. Of course, you wouldn't want to lose in a situation like this, but they know right now that half one is what they've got to work on. And Afro is confident with their new player and Harry, they can still continue to get better. Overall series stats are like this. John and Jim have a pretty hard time with the SMGs. Temma Gravity doing kind of what they do. And yeah, Afro is here with a 1.26. Harry with a 1.18. My, um, well, my fantasy picks at least so far. Not looking too bad for the London guys, to be honest. Let's dive into this second series. Then it was, uh, well, the Toronto Ultra versus the Seattle Surge. Interesting series again. It went game five. I felt like Ultra should be favoured here just because they're better at respawn than Surge are right now and they're also good at search and destroy. Game 1 goes Ultra's way pretty effectively and then Game 2, Insight, honestly, this entire series, man, when you put this guy in a clutch situation, he is such a menace to deal with. Like, I mean, he makes a great play here, gets the one kill, waits just long enough, but I mean, Pred was, well, he was pretty much the shining star, I would say, of the Seattle Surge team. Certainly carried them through Game 3. Wins this clutch with 7.7 .7 seconds when he picks up the bomb, gets it with 0.2 on the clock remaining. Oh, well, that's enough for Seattle to win this game. They 
they win the map in the end, and they take it to a control. The control goes their way as well, because Pred was an absolute monster. This is just completely ridiculous what he did. I thought they were going to lose this, actually, but he was 37 in 19 to win this Berlin control for them. He was just making plays all across the park. There was a defense that Toronto had. I believe it was a 2-1 in Seattle's favor at that point. That would have taken it to a round five, and it was like a 7-7 life count, and then Pred out of nowhere again gets like another two Bs, and all of a sudden, um, it's a significant life deficit for the Ultra guys. They're trapped in their spawn, and it's GG well played. 2-1 to Seattle going into a final respawn and thinking, okay, Seattle, they're going to bounce back a bit, but this is like the classic Seattle situation. You never really know what you're going to get from them, because anything seems possible with this Seattle team. They can collapse at any time. Mac had a really poor map four. There's no way, well, there's no other way of putting it, to be honest. I still thought they were going to win this game. They were up like 246, I think, to like 223, going into the final P1, and man, Tuscan Harpoint, like, look, this game isn't great. The maps aren't great. Like, um, it doesn't really work particularly well. The spawns aren't great, but Tuscan Harpoint is a spectacle. Like, I really enjoy pretty much every game that is played on Tuscan Harpoint. We'll see Optic play it here, and I believe in a second, actually, even though that wasn't quite a nail biter like this one. But yeah, I mean, 252 46, Toronto went huge, but like, Mac at this point was like 18 27, and uh, all he needed to do was like get some kills towards the end, and they would have maybe won the game, right? It felt like they were going to win it, and then he does another few times. Like, um, he was going through the blender, there's no doubt. He was in the spawn trap, he was in the cycle, but at 18 31, that's got to be one of the worst statistical performances in a single map we have seen in a very long time. I think it's a 0.26 KT. It probably will end up on the thumbnail. We'll actually see it right here. I think this is actually what we see. That, yeah, 18 31. He got 10 assists to be fair, but like his damage, 1600 damage. Like, you know, that, that's pretty tough. And it's not like he got that much hill time. He had a minute 10 in the hill. So, yeah, rough time for Mac on this game. Goes to a game five. I know, well, it kind of, well, zero says right here. I feel for Mac that map there, just watching the meme up. I know for a fact he was getting so unlucky. Every net, every pinch was always on him. So sometimes it happens. Happens, but of course, look, if that does happen, you've got to regain your composure for map five. And that is something that certainly did not happen to Seattle Surge. And as Toronto say, drown them out, basically just letting them go. Because this game five was dominant and insight. I mean, look, as I say, put this guy in a situation like this, 1v2 to close out the game. That's what insight's going to do. He was just so clutch, really, all across the park. Like, I mean, look at this. Snipers was pretty disgusting. Even earlier on in this game, Mac was trying to clutch a 1v2 when they were down 1 0 to make it a 1 1 game. Mac gets the first kill on Bants, I'm pretty sure, planting the bomb. And then insight cleans up the rest of it. So, honestly, this guy is unbelievable. Takes down Pred as well here to close out the game. And uh, I mean, a 6-0 in game five. Like, yes, you've got to give Toronto credit for somehow winning this series when it did not look particularly likely. But also Seattle, right, mentally, that's a complete collapse. There's no other way to look at it. Like, it just does seem to me that um, this team has something missing. There's no doubt. They have the talent. Pred showed it map three. Sib showed it map four. But they can never seemingly put it together when it mattered. And a uh, game five like this is kind of where you show what you're made of, really, and what your team at ceiling is. And I mean, Toronto showed they're on another level at the moment. They're overall stats are like this. Mac has a 0.76 but of course largely hurt by that game four. The rest of the guys honestly looking okay but it was the clutch factor in the end that proved the difference between the two squads. Let's talk about this series then. Optic versus the Florida Mutineers. A rematch of the series of course we saw them play in the group stages at the Prime Classic. Like um, I saw Ake saying and you know, I did a tweet about this and you guys might have seen some of the reaction and he was saying that yeah that series they played with general in the group stages at the Prime Classic didn't really mean that much. They got out of the groups anyway but still at that point they were only 1-0. and zero. It was a big game for them. Yes it was their first match they played with general. They were certainly pretty rusty, right? But, um, you know, still in that series, they got 3 0 pretty comfortably by the Mutineers, and here was kind of, the, well, their chance to do revenge. It pretty much just show straight up the Pro Loot was a much more sensible pickup than general in the team. Because, um, I mean, that series, Dashy, Shotzi, like, all the guys had a really tough time, and um, it seemed to be caused to the pacing issues, really, that general was probably causing. Pro Loot seems to catalyze these guys so well, and today, he was putting up great numbers, especially in the Session Destroy. We'll see the game one here, though, actually, I mean, as we see on the Tuscan, this is, um, honestly, usually these Tuscans, I feel like, come down to the wire. Got a bit sketchy in the end for Optic, but yeah, Scump was going off game one. They all looked really solid. I mean, look at what Vivid is doing right there. But um, honestly, the game one stats, like the numbers don't tell the story of this game. I've got to show you on the big picture right here, like what this actually looks like. I mean, look at this. It's just completely absurd. This is Florida Mutineers, probably in a nutshell. Awakening, 31 in 24, four seconds in the half point. Dave Paddy, 25 in 22. That's like a classic Dave Paddy stat line, 15 seconds in the half point. Skies, 16 in 22, Vivid, 17 in 31. But, um, you know, Skies has got two and a half minutes in the half point. Vivid's maybe doing his best without a pretty tough game. We see some of the charts he's making there maybe questionable, but like um, this surely is not a recipe for success. And Florida is just a frustrating team because it feels like always they need to make a change, but they always somehow get a result that's good enough to prevent them making a change. And it's just such a vintage thing for Florida to do, to look good at a major, come in here and then just get bodied. And it's like, well, what do you do with this team? Like, clearly they have issues. And um, that's the thing. I just never see this team winning at events because they're just not going to be able to put it together in as many like series in a row to actually win. And uh, when the stats look like this in terms of hill time, like obviously it doesn't tell the entire story, the stats here, but it just gives you a 
picture of what's going on doesn't seem like a winning recipe, I would say. Of course, opt to win the game one, go to the game two, and already a 3-0 advantage early on here, because Prolu, to me, what a play he made. I mean, Dasha gets taken down, Prolu's at the back, one versus one, just completely jukes awakening out, gets the kill as well, and the double sets him up for a 12-3 performance here in what was a dominant search and destroy victory. Like, at Prolu, honestly, does seem to be, like, people were saying he's the, you know, doppelganger Ely, or kind of like the poor man's Ely, or whatever you want to say, or the mini Ely, but like, honestly, this guy's been playing out of his skin, there's no doubt. This series, he was absolutely spectacular, so seems to be exactly the player they were looking for, as we've kind of seen the last couple of days. And then, of course, well, a couple of rounds later, it's the 3-1 at this point. Pro Luke finds himself in a 1 versus 2, and, you know, who else to clutch here but uh, the man himself. So he's 8-1 at this point in this search and destroy, and, I mean, yeah, kills the bomb diffuser, and that's a well job done for the rest of the round as well, especially after he picks up the final one when they have, oh, well, very few seconds on the bomb. At this point, he's 10-1, just dominating the game. Pro Luke was a monster in that game, too. Opt to close things out as well here. 6-3 in the end it was here on this Berlin. And, um, yeah, that's 2-0 advantage, an advantage that this team very rarely indeed rescinds. They go to a Berlin control as well. Look at these stats as well, just to mention. I mean, here's Prolute 12 in 3 on this game. Skump doesn't have to do all that much. And it's Prolute also is planting the bomb right. Three bombs planted for Prolute. Just got does go to show he's pretty much doing it all for them in search and destroy, which is very impressive indeed. And then it was the control where Shotzi started to turn. I really don't think I've talked about Shotzi too much lately, but certainly deserves the credit. It's maps like this on Berlin where you can kind of finesse so hard that you just know, like, what a frustrating guy this is to play against. And um, he was making massive plays. Round 1 was certainly the case right here. He kind of gets the play of the game actually as a result of this. But again, it was making plays on the point to get them a well a decent job done. They end up taking the advantage. They take an offense in the end on round four to close out the game. And that's job done a 3-0 for the Opta guys again. They've now done two 3 zeros back to back. They beat Los Angeles Gwillers. Now they've taken down Florida Mutineers. I think this is an impressive 3-0 because I feel like Florida are a difficult team to beat 3-0. Of course, they got 3-0'd by Florida at the Prime Classic. And you can talk about other extenuating circumstances, online land, whatever. But it's still 3 0 Mutineers is pretty tough to do. And obviously they've done it with their substitute again, looking very coherent in all the modes. Overall stats are like this. This is what I think the Scump is going to be so happy with. When he looks at a scoreboard like this, he's just going to be loving life. This is kind of where Scump was, I thought, at the start of the season, where Scump was having some games where he was like at 1KD or 0.95, 0 .90 KD, and yet his team is still winning the series comfortably. Like, and Scump knows, as we've seen the last few days, he's got more in the tank than a 0.96. And when he delivers that, of course, he didn't need to deliver it today. But when he does deliver those crazy maps, which of course he has done, that's kind of what was happening on the run up to Major 1, where in some of the kind of later Major 1 qualifier games, it was Scump going a little bit negative but the rest of the team was carrying the job and getting the job done for him. And, uh, and then, of course, Scump of the Major turned up to a new gear. And then kind of the rest is history there. But probably has a 1.17. Shots you with the 1.21. Dash you with the 1.13. Just great stuff. And it was Skies and Vivid that, of course, will deeply struggle statistically. But as we saw in, for example, that game one, they were trying their best to get in the hard points. Wasn't really working out for the rest of the guys. So certainly some words to say on the Florida Mutineers, guys, I am sure. But yes, yet to drop a map here with Prolute, our Optic Texas. I mean, it, well, I guess it's Shotzi, Dashy getting most of the plaudits here on the kind of post-game scoreboard. But Prolute with a 4KD on Search and Destroy on Berlin. That was certainly what got them through the series. And as a bolt scum says, 1-3-0. Start stage 3, 2-0. and zero. So the perfect start for them. Not having dropped a map yet is very impressive indeed. And as Prolute says, just to close out the video, the team is flowing very nicely. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us YouTube gods. This is a good video. I'd just like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive call of duty community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.